Hello, welcome back. It's the great Vanzini. I'm cutting my head off yet once again. I either can show the guitar or I can cut my head off, I guess. So, this is a Paul Reed Smith uh, SE Custom, uh, a PRS SE Custom. It's kind of in an orange, pretty bright orange colored, which is really what drew my attention to it. Got it used at Guitar Center. It was 500, I don't remember the exact price, 550-ish as I recall. And I just got it about maybe two or three months ago. Really interesting why you kind of got to be careful at any used place, I guess. Uh, I don't want to pick on Guitar Center any more than anybody else, but the thing played great. It sounded great. I brought it home, played it for a couple days, and then I put it in my guitar rack with all my other guitars, and then came back about three weeks later and the whole entire neck had was it was unplayable. I couldn't I couldn't strike a note. It was all all fuzzy buzzy kind of stuff. So um, so anyway, it had a back bow to the neck. It went. I'd point the guitar north and the neck pointed south. I mean, it was really. And I don't know what happened. I have no good rational explanation for that except that maybe. They adjusted the neck right before I walked in the door, and it just hadn't taken yet, but usually necks react pretty quickly, so they show some signs. So I don't know, and I thought, my gosh, did they have something wedged up in here that... When I looked at the neck, then it was pretty clear that it had just bowed back. So I adjusted the neck, and this is where it's important to come in. When you take the little truss rod cover off, had I done that in the store, I don't know if I, I don't know if they'd let me do that or not. Do it surreptitiously, perhaps. I don't know. But had I looked in there, I would have found that somebody had already messed around with the uh, with the truss rod, and it in fact had almost rounded it out. It wasn't. It was just starting <coughs> to be rounded out. My little nut driver got on top of it and did just fine, and I was able to. Uh, I turned it back about a half a turn and it came right back into shape and everything is great once again. That's all it took. I'm afraid I went maybe a little overboard so I may have to tighten it back down. I really should use the old quarter turn. Never do anything more than a quarter of a turn. Even though the necks react rather quickly I like to uh, I like to make that adjustment and um, it, it becomes playable almost immediately, but then I don't make another adjustment for about another... I usually give it two weeks just in case, uh, just to see um, just to see what the final end result is and then make an adjustment from there. So, um, so now it's back to playing fine. I love PRS SE guitars. I have like four or five of them. I'm, I'm a little off the deep end with them, but I have, uh, I have this, I have a semi-hollow I have my, uh, I don't have my original one. I used to have an American Paul Reed Smith, and it was pretty old and beat up and needed some work. I needed to have the uh, the frets um, crowned or something or worked on, whatever they do with frets. I don't do frets. Uh, and so I sold it and ended up getting one of the very first SE models. And the first SE model, if you looked at the tremolo, it just went out of tune. So I kept it about a year and played it and struggled with it and fought with it and uh, I, I don't know much about adjusting trims. And they're covered in the back, so I don't know if they were back then or not, but it was like one of the very first early models of the SE uh, models. And uh, so I got rid of it and didn't have another one for years and then bit by bit I found one that I liked that played really well. The trim stayed in tune. I can. Uh, they're, they're not like um, like the Reverend I showed the other day. But there, with all the playing, I, I was just doing... You didn't see it, but I did about eight minutes of playing, of kind of jamming around and fooling around. And um, it's perfectly in tune, still. Did just great. So, um, I, so I really like these. I, I really I think they're a great value buying them used and that way you can pick and find one that's um, that um, sounds good mm -hmm. 
I like everything about them. I actually did uh, some jazzy stuff a while back. I don't know if I can do it through the uh, Boss E-Band, but I can't, no. It just sounds like mud. dialed into here and uh, the the effects they've added onto it is a little Pat Metheny quality uh, from some song of his I don't know what it is anyway uh, two humbuckers I think we all know the story 25 inch scale I love the 25 inch scale on the PRS guitars for my old crippled up hands, that seems to be about the best. It's not too crowded up here. I can still play up here. I prefer the 22 fret to the 24 because if I have the 24 fret one, I will sooner or later try to get up there and make use of those frets. And that's where things fall apart. So um, this is a 24. I, will, I would get up there sooner or later. I think 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20. Yep, 24. So um, I prefer the 22 though, because I just that way I'm not tempted, and uh, it's just even though it's a slightly longer. Uh, slightly longer fretboard, I, I prefer the 22. It just feels better in hand somehow. Great Vanzini. That's all you're going to get out of me is minor pentatonics and major pentatonics. Nothing much more. It's all uh, a one-trick pony. Well, two tricks. So <laughs> that's about it uh, these days. Um, um, it's just a really boring backing track there too. It's just uh, part of the problem with backing tracks and not making their own is um, they're just re very repetitive. That backing track is right about 10 seconds long off the Boss E band. Um, it's a lot better if you have, I, I think with Apple it's called Garage Band, and I don't know anything about that, but um, I think it's the similar one. For Windows, uh, there's one called Band in a Box that uses real instruments. You can do it all in MIDI, it sounds terrible, and then convert instruments to real instruments, and um, that, that actually sounds really, really good. Uh, so, part two is a Paul Reed Smith with a bad jack. With a jack that needs help. Here goes the pick. I think I mentioned in one of my... Oh. I think I mentioned in one of the previous videos that I, uh, I was never very good with using a pick. Oh, I, I was okay using a pick, but I, I couldn't hold on to them. And they would go flying in slow motion through the air, and then I'd grab another one keep them somewhere here and grab another one and pretty soon I'd be out of picks. So, um, and a lot of that just has to do because I finger picked. Uh, when I was younger I did a lot of folk stuff. I'm gonna be right back and uh, find some tone here. So the first guitar uh, we looked at real quick um, was the Paul Reed Smith SE Custom with the two humbuckers and you can see that it's got two shade, two tone humbuckers, a light cream colored one and a black one, kind of, or each, each humbucker is got a different color designation. This is an old style humbucker with just the metal coverings on it. And boy what a difference in tone. Uh, I think in the mix you probably wouldn't notice it, you know. Uh, well, you would, but I mean, you could EQ it 
out and it just depends on what type of amp you're using and stuff like that. Uh, this is a real old one that I bought years and years ago. Um, and it's just got the best fret work of any of them. I mean, it's just so slick. It's like it's been rounded. Maybe the guy, maybe who owned it before, um, had some fret work done. It's chipped up. I got this for like 200 and 250 ish, 275 at a pawn shop. And you can see the cover around the pickups chipped. I thought there was some crack somewhere else. I don't know. Where. This one has a real sensitive uh, vibrato. It's going to make me a liar this time around. Uh, other than uh, this being a custom and this being a Santana, this is nicer. The orange one's nicer looking, I think. It's got uh, like a flamed maple thing on top. It's probably a veneer. This is just straight wood shellacked over. I love this guitar though. It, it, it plays really, really well. I don't, when I'm playing rock and roll, it's also really dusty because it's been sitting off in the corner for like four months. So, um, uh, so I like this. So I'm going to make this real quick. The same scale length, same everything else. I think this is this is a 22 fret versus the orange one was a 24, and I do I do like that 22 frets because that way I'm not tempted to try to go up way high. I love that 25 inch scale length because for, for some reason I can get up here and I can't do it in this position sitting down. playing way up in G, way up high. And I can still hit most of those notes with my fat, fat, big, clumsy, arthritic hands. Um, I do see that um, some of the inlay on this, the custom has birds, the one I just showed, the orange one. This just has uh, like a stripe thing going across here. That's fine. I don't really care. Uh, anyway, that's a couple of uh, PRS SEs there. Not a lot of difference. This is a newer one. The trim is better. I like the pickups better. I like the looks better. Uh, I still love this one though, so uh, I don't know. Anyway, that's all for now. So I, I appreciate you watching, and uh, if you got any questions, feel free to ask them. Whether I can answer them or not is a whole other question. Uh, and these, oh, these are, I'll just go back real quick. These are just set up. There's a three-way toggle. Uh, that's in the bridge, or in the neck. That's the middle. And that's the bridge. volume control is a little scratchy. Um, very basic guitars. Uh, if you're starting out, you know, I mean, I think the discussion is, do you want a, uh, like a used Mexican Stratocaster or a Telecaster? Do you want a used made in Mexico Stratocaster? Or do you want a used PRS SE? And I think any of the answer is up to you as to what feels good and what plays best and feels most comfortable to you. I can't tell you that. I just think guitars under $500 back in the 60s when I was a kid at age 16, uh, you know, if I could get, this was 275 in a pawn shop in, uh, back, it was 10 years ago. But uh, if I could, if I could get a guitar back then, even at that price now, not even talking inflation, I'd be re I would have really been pleased at the quality of this. Um, back then on the low end, if you weren't going to buy a real Fender, there were no made in Mexico Fenders. I'm going to put that down before I cause some massive 
electrical outage or something. Back then, it, uh, there was no um, made in Mexico fenders. You either bought a fender or you bought a Gibson. They were expensive. Uh, my brother's, my older brother's Strat was a 62 Strat. It was about 500 bucks new in 60. He bought it in early 63. And so uh, it was like four something plus the case. I don't remember now, but I, I just remember him talking about that. So, uh, and then he sold it to me for a hundred years later, a few years later for like 125. So I made a, I played the heck out of it and turned around, sold it for 150. 25 bucks just like that so anyway but i, I just think these low-end guitars are, are deals are, are great great deals there's really lots of playability to them uh, most of them sound just great you know i did the gretches those were all all those streamliners are like what are they 450 or 550 i don't remember 550 <sighs> great deal so anyway that's it for now thanks for watching give a thumbs up down below Give a thumbs down. I don't care. That's good. That's good.